Super Meat Boy Forever is the long-awaited follow-up from developer Team Meat. After nearly seven years in development, it's finally out, and might not be the game a lot of fans were expecting. Well, I've now punched and kicked my way to the end of time and back, so is this another instant classic, or just a weird misstep? Well, warm up those fingers, oil up your spacebar, and let's find out. Super Meat Boy Forever was first announced back in 2014 as an auto-running mobile game, and as a big fan of the original, I wasn't all that upset about the change of gameplay given the constraints of the platform. But then three years later, Team Mate changed direction, and Super Meat Boy Forever graduated into a big boy game in its own right, now with planned release on all major consoles. And then finally in December 2020, Tommy Refness's heart grew three times its size, and Super Meat Boy Forever was released into the world two days before Christmas. Although along with his heart, his bank account also grew three times its size, as Super Meat Boy Forever has two different timed exclusivity deals with the Epic Game Store and the Nintendo Switch, which lasts until sometime in 2021. And I know nothing gets Jimmy's rustling more than these sort of anti-consumer moves, and normally I love to whip out my pitchfork as much as the next guy, but I've got to think of the Poots and Dutes brand, baby. So with that in mind, let's go and take a quick and potentially outdated commercial break. Do you use dumb stores like Steam, Origin, or GOG, but want to play the newest games like Fortnite, Tetris Effect, Predator Hunting Grounds, Fortnite, Super Meat Boy Forever, or even Fortnite? Well then don't be a dingus and go download the Epic Games Store. Don't you like free stuff? They've got so much Fortnite money they can't even keep it all and want it to trickle down to you. All you've got to do is pick a teat and latch on. If you haven't downloaded the Epic Games Store yet, you're just leaving money out, and that's just bad financials. And don't forget to check out Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 5 Zero Point with a special crossover from Disney Plus's Disney's The Mandalorian. Download it for free today. Right now. Go do it. And for God's sakes, buy some V-Bucks, you animal. Welcome back. So as I was saying before, Super Meat Boy Forever is here. And even though it's no longer made with tablets in mind, it's still an auto runner, meaning you have no control over the horizontal movement of your dude. They're always running non-stop, and for the most part, the only way to swap directions is by jumping from a wall. And I've got to say, as a longtime fan of the series, I was so ready to hate this game. In fact, I think so in my heart, I felt like I was personally wronged. I guess because Super Meat Boy is a very special game to me. It's one of my favorite games of all time, and one that shaped my interest in ultra-hard precision platformers. It even was one of the games that actually pushed me to start making games, and its influence can easily be seen from how shamelessly I copied the movement mechanics from my platforming Ludum Dare entry. Now what I love about the original Super Meat Boy is that it's so hard and so unforgiving, but if you can learn to keep all your baby rage bottled up, you'll find yourself breezing through levels you once couldn't even dream of finishing as you become tuned to all the movement quirks of Meat Boy. The controls are tight and overall it's super rewarding in the same way getting dunked on by a Soulsborne boss over and over and over just to finally down him is rewarding. And through the years I've gone back to fully complete the game four different times and it's always a blast. At this point I don't even need five full hours to unlock the kid. So I guess I got that going for me. Now with my feelings of the original out there, I think it's understandable when I say I was disappointed when I first heard the next game was going to take away a lot of that control. Like I said, I also understand it was a limitation of the platform, but then almost a decade later when I finally booted it up and came face to face with the fact that this wasn't the sequel I'd wanted, I had a very hard time fighting the draw to be an angry cliche who doesn't like change and pretty much just wanted them to re-release Super Meat Boy with new levels. And that feeling stayed with me for the first few hours while I was still getting used to the controls, because they're deceptively simple. Like I said, you can't move yourself, but you can jump, and then while in the air, you can punch, which also functions as a dash. You can also kick, and if you hold a button, it'll send you flying toward the ground faster than any normal human can even comprehend. So the entirety of the game is played with just two buttons, and I think that's what really annoyed me at first. It really feels like there's just a lack of depth. But as I went on to find out, that's actually more of a player limitation, and once you understand the movement mechanics, it's just as rewarding an experience as the original, even if it doesn't quite scratch the same itch. And before I go deeper into the mechanics, I want to touch on the world and level design of the game. So the campaign split up into six different worlds, each with five or six light levels, harder dark world versions of those levels, as well as a boss stage, excluding the final, final world, which only has normal levels. And that might seem pretty light on content considering the original had 20 light and dark levels per world, but each level is actually around 10 mini stages dynamically created from a pool of handcrafted chunks, and I think that's an important thing to understand. This isn't a fully procedural game. Sure, the levels won't be the same depending on your seed, but each chunk has been purposefully designed, and let me tell you, these are no joke. This game is one of the most technically demanding I've played in a long time, requiring you to have a mastery over its two button controls if you want to have any chance of clearing some of the harder stages. And one of my favorite changes is that the Dark World levels are now only unlocked if you clear a level with an A plus rank, meaning you finished it faster than the level time. You suck! Now as expected in each level, your timer starts when you spawn into the first chunk, 
But what's awesome is that it only actually locks in your time when you complete a chunk. So if you die 10 times in one section, only the life where you make it through is counted. And the timer also shows how much over or under the level pace you are at your current chunk, and it makes it a lot of fun when you're ready to go back and start fully clearing the worlds. And my recommendation would be, don't even try doing this until you've made it through most of the main light worlds. Because I don't know what kind of deep blue cheating butthole machine at the Team Me offices was playing for the times you got a race against. I mean, they're ridiculous. If you haven't perfected dash cancels to shave off fractions of a second, then you just aren't going to get these. But honestly, I like that it pushes you to get better before tackling the much harder Dark World variations because it lets you appreciate the challenge a bit more than if you'd only finished the first world and then gotten slapped into oblivion when the Dark World asks you to do something you just weren't ready for. Because like I said, on the surface this game looks very simple, but then in each world, and even sometimes in each level, new mechanics are being introduced. As an example, in the first world you've got these floating enemies that when hit in the air reset your dash, allowing you to chain together dashes and kicks. Then in the next world you've got areas that'll kill you if you stay in them for too long, and fans, or switches which move stuff around depending on which direction you hit them. And then later on you've got these items which will change the direction your punch will take you in, or blocks that are controlled by your jump and kick inputs, and then these creepy spiders which lock you into a screen making the borders seamlessly connect to each other. And seriously, that's like maybe a quarter of the unique level mechanics in the game. And I can really only speak to the chunks I played on my seed, but the design is so impressive with all these different mechanics coming together to make extremely well thought out movement puzzles. And that's really what they are. Most chunks have one or two solutions, and this isn't the kind of game you can just wing your way through, because not only do you not get a full view of the level, but there's no slowing down to catch your breath and study. Most chunks require you to learn it in sections, and only by solving the earlier areas will you be able to start working on the later parts. But once it comes together and you pull off the perfect inputs, it feels amazing. It's the same kind of feeling only bun spankingly hard platformers can give you. Like Dust Force grinding out SS ranks, or some of Celeste's seasides, and it's the kind of rush I live for. That being said, I don't think every mechanic is a winner. Like, I really hated these areas which flip the gravity direction, just because it feels more confusing than hard. And even after plenty of time with them, my brain just wasn't adjusting. Now, another one of my favorite things in the original Super Meat Boy was collecting absolutely everything, meaning every band-aid across every level and warp zone, and unlocking every character. And in Super Meat Boy Forever, all these things make a return, but band-aids are now Baby Nuggets pacifiers, and they come in three varieties. One that just needs to be collected, one that needs to be collected in a certain amount of time, and then one that needs to be grabbed twice. And like everything else, some of these are downright evil, because collecting them is only half the battle. You then have to manage to get out of whatever terrible position they put you in, and finish the chunk to lock it in. Warp zones also make a return, but instead of these being harder platforming levels, they now take the form of homages to retro games like F-Zero, Punch-Out, Mega Man, Street Fighter, and Mortal Kombat. And if you thought the main game was punishing, then you clearly haven't tested your meat. These warp zones can usually be completed easily enough, but if you want to unlock the character linked to it, you've got to finish it while following some extremely strict criteria. Like for Tester Meat, you not only have to fill your bar before Larry, but you have to beat him at every attempt, and that means you can make maybe one mistake before you have to completely restart. Bruh. And I wouldn't even be upset about having to restart, but most of these warp zones have 4-5 to five seconds of unskippable animation at the start of every single attempt, and it starts to add up really quick when you might be spending an hour just completing a single warp zone. And then once finished, as long as you have enough pacifiers, you'll unlock a unique character which can be selected whenever you start a new level. Each character also shows the requirements for unlocking, whether it be progression base, lock behind pacifiers, warp zones, or something else. And unlike the original, each character plays exactly the same. They're essentially just a skin with unique animations and sounds. And some of these are really cool. Like one of my personal favorites was the F Meat. While the Meat Sauna is one of the most distractingly hideous skins I've ever seen in my entire life. So once you've conquered every world and every boss encounter throughout the game, at some point you're going to feel like you've seen and done everything. You've collected all 30 pacifiers and got over 100% on every world. Except the last one, where you've already scoured the entire internet looking for answers and came up with nothing back in December. And now it's May of next year and you don't want to do the research and update your script, so you just put something meta in that's always a crowd pleaser. And at this point you think you're done with the game. But if you so choose, that can just be the start. From the main menu and loading your file, you can start a new game plus, which starts your game over with a completely different seed. I'm not sure if it unlocks harder chunks, but at the very least the levels are almost guaranteed to be made up of chunks that you've never seen before. And I should mention if you want to fully unlock everything, a minimum of 3 full playthroughs is required to get 90 pacifiers. My first full playthrough took me 15 and a half hours, so you're looking at around 50 hours if you're a diehard completionist. And that's about it. I started off hating the idea of this game, but somewhere along the way I learned to open my heart and love. It's a beautiful thing, and if I could kiss Tommy and the rest of Team Meat between the cheeks, I wouldn't even think twice. 
I wouldn't mind kissing that man between the cheeks. Don't write this one off as a mobile game or a cash grab just because it's an auto runner. This is one of the best precision platformers of 2020, and without a doubt the best auto runner out there. Joining the elite ranks of such games as Super Mario Run, and who could forget 2013's Mirror's Edge on the iPhone. Enjoy the time on top, Super Meat Boy Forever. You earned it. What are you waiting for? The video's over. Go buy some V-Bucks. Yeah, that's a good one.